what's the secret to staying relevant, successful, and influential for 25 years? Who? You want to take that one? No, you I, I have no idea. Looking at you. <laughs> I would say luck. I'd say a little bit of luck, but I also uh, uh, I'm trying to reinvent, you know, constantly uh, uh, trying to look for something new, something different, and. Uh, and I, you know, fortunately, I guess we were able to survive our mistakes along yeah. the way. And uh, I, I, I think uh, just staying relative. Yeah, mainly that, I think, you know, to be able to survive your mistakes. And mistakes were normally things which are very close to your heart, mm. you know. And, um, uh, and, and if they went wrong, somewhere down the line, the only thing that keeps you going is the fact that you're still surviving. Mm. And uh, you try and do it as often as you can, as much as possible, and I think, uh, he more than me would tell you that you know to be uh, such a successful star uh, around the world, there are a lot of lot more expectations from you, mm. and you need to keep it very simple. Then you don't need to be uh, trying to work for those expectations or keep on doing the stuff that people expect of you. Mm. You keep on doing what started you off, which is being relevant, being novel, trying to you know uh, kind of reinvent yourself, and the simple things which made you want to be an actor in the first place. You know, you both have enormous success, but also enormous pressure. How do you balance, or how do you really combine artistic integrity with commercial success? Because that's a huge pressure on both of you, I'd, I'd imagine. I say you just have to make sure you get time for yourself, time for your friends, time for your family, and let the next idea percolate. Uh, um, it's, not, it's not so difficult to achieve a balance. Um, I'm, I'm able to compartmentalize pretty well the private life and the public life. How about you? I, I do that too completely. I mean, I, um, as far as work is concerned, I think what he says is the, um, actually the, the crux of it. You know, if you can be leading your public life, which is on sets also, yeah. um, invariably, I think if you can protect it in terms of that from your private life and your private life from the public life, I think when you go back home and you're leading the regular stuff that you're supposed to do, uh, in, in whatever form, with family, friends, I think it just keeps you uh, uh, kind of grounded. You know, like, um, like my kids, I mean, more often than not, don't like my films. And that's, <laughs> that's nice. Really? Yeah. And that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they really, well, oh, this one was so boring, Papa. So, it, you know, it's like, it's not the biggest thing in the house, Papa's film to do well. It is not a special thing. Mm. It should not be a special thing with family and friends. And invariably, you know, we make friends even in the film industry. And then everybody kind of just starts uh, pushing you along and saying, no, this was the best thing you did. Yeah, it was different. I think the real friends in the film industry also tell you, oh, keep it simple and keep it normal. I think that's what actually really helps you and takes the pressure off. That at home, you're a nobody. Right. And uh, as long as you're a nobody with your friends and at home, I think you can be a big star like Brad Pitt outside. <laughs> Namaskar. I'm, I'm a movie star. I'm 51 years of age. And I don't use Botox as yet. So I'm, <laughs> I'm clean, but I do behave like you saw, like a 21-year-old in my movies. Yeah, I do that. I, I sell dreams, and I peddle love to millions of people back home in India who assume that I'm the best lover in the world. If you don't tell anyone, I'm going to tell you I'm not, but I never let that assumption go away. <laughs> First of all, it's an honor for me to receive this doctorate today. Uh, so thank you, everyone, who's involved with this. And, and humbled is a word often used by people in my profession. You know, you meet actors, they'll give, I'm very humbled, I'm very humbled, we all. I dislike the hypocritical, obsequious connotation of it in these contexts. So I'm not going to use it, but I will say that such occasions have a way of putting me right in my place, which is right there. So thank you, everyone, for putting me in my place. I do get invited to conferences and inaugurations now and then to speak. And when I receive the invite, I also receive my brief. It's usually about success and my tips on it. Yeah, it's, it always happens. It's nice. You know, whenever I start feeling too arrogant about myself, I always take a trip to America. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, the immigration guys kick the star out of stardom. And, uh, but I, I, I have my small victories. You know, they always ask me uh, how tall I am, and I always lie and get away five feet, ten inches. Yeah. Next time, I'm going to be more adventurous. What color are you? I'm going to say white. 
Yeah, but okay. So <clears throat> I'm supposed to be serious here because this was students and kids. So first of all, let me just thank uh, the faculty and students of the Yale University, fellows of Timothy Dwight College and the Chubb Fellowship and Master Jeffrey Brenzel for being so kind. Thank you. Uh, Yale Office of International Affairs and uh, the Yale South Asian Society. And of course, Isha for dealing uh, and following up with the most disorganized and incommunicative person in the world, which is me, to fix today's meeting with you all. I'm really, really happy, very humble, very honored, and thank you for having me over here. <laughs> Success is a wonderful thing, but it tends not to be the sort of experience that we learn from. We enjoy it, perhaps we even deserve it, but we don't acquire wisdom from it. And maybe that's why it cannot be passed on Either me being successful does not mean my kids are going to be successful even if I teach them everything that I know and how to do it. So I feel that talking about success is completely a big waste of time. Instead, let me tell you very honestly, whatever happened to me happened because I've always been terrified of failure. I don't want as much to succeed as much as I don't want to fail. I come from a very normal lower middle class family. I saw a lot of failure. My father was a beautiful man and the most successful failure in the world. My mother also failed to stay long, long enough with me to see me become a big movie star. We were quite poor actually, and let me tell you, poverty is not an ennobling experience at all. Poverty entails fear and stress and sometimes depression. I watched my parents go through this several times.